Welkom terug. Nou, die Nationale Gezondheidsverzekering is iets wat baie mense redelijk bekommerd het. En volgend het ons die voorrecht om met Craig Comrie te gezaal. Hy is die hoofduitvoerende beamte van die medische fonds Pravmed. En dis wat oor ons nou juist volgend gezaal. Ons moet ook noem dat ons wel uitgereik het na die gezondheidsdepartement toe, maar geen terugvoer gehad het om hulle kant te stel. Nee, good morning Craig and welcome. Good morning and good to be with you. Craig, I want to start with uh, the first question on my mind is, if we look at the national health insurance, what would you say are the advantages and disadvantages of that? Look, I think you have to get stuck right into the middle of the politics of, of health systems across the world. So our, our health system is in need of, a, of reforms, but the national health insurance bill is currently agreed to, and we're waiting for the president to sign in, um, actually stipulates that we cannot have medical schemes function separately to the national health system. And so um, the initial move is to pool all the money from both private sector and the public sector into one single space for the Minister of Health to then manage and, uh, and effectively dictate to us what services we should receive. So the idea of national health is not bad. The idea is to actually improve health systems, make healthcare affordable, which we do need. Um, the problem is when you start doing it in a way that uh, is depicted in the National Health Bill, um, this is the wrong way to achieve what is termed universal health cover. The implication of what you're saying is that everyone that's spending money on a medical aid scheme, that money is going to the government. Uh, you have, as, an, as a medical aid scheme, you have to send that money to the government and they decide what the allocation for that money will be. That's exactly the single pool that they talk about in the National Health Bill. The problem is that you can't just take money um, that people are, are voluntarily paying to medical schemes. You'll have to tax it in some way. So you'll have to increase taxes quite extensively to actually fund that. So if you, if you look at the numbers, I mean, we're talking about um, a, an annual cost bill that makes Eskom look tiny. So we're yeah. talking about about 500 to 800 billion rand a year to fund this national health system that they anticipate. And if you run with the promises, the political promises, which actually indicate, you know, there'll be no co-payments, people will get access to private uh, hospitals and private facilities. Um, these are huge promises, but you have to bring the budget alongside that promise. And so it's when you look at the practical delivering on those promises where the things start to fall flat. I think, uh, Craig, my worry is in many countries across the world that already have national health insurance and we're looking at countries that's got a strong economy that South Africa's got and these countries are struggling mm. to upkeep that national health insurance. So why do we think we will be able uh, to go ahead with that? And I think on top of that, if we look at some of our public hospitals and the mismanagement and the accountability of that mismanagement and how we are losing millions, um, what will be the difference if we the implement a national health insurance? It's, it's exactly the point. I think you make the point for me. Um, the issue there is how do, you, how do you actually improve access and the quality of health for everybody in South Africa? That we need to do better at. Um, the National Health Insurance Bill, though, answers only a political agenda. And so when you start to try and reform a health system like ours, you quickly reflect on the lessons that are in, in all the different countries. In fact, the interesting lesson is that in a BRICS, uh, if you review the health systems in all the BRICS countries, none of them actually and effectively relegate the private health care se sector um, to a much smaller role. In fact, they want private health care to step in. Maybe the similarity, always a good one, is, is it's almost pooling everything together into an ESKIM Instead of saying to everybody, look, if you can look after yourself and fund your own solar panels and so forth, you'll, you'll actually remove the pressure of government to provide healthcare service to those, uh, to those that can't afford. So it's, it's exactly the reverse of that type of, of, of system. And, and private healthcare, the medical scheme space, actually delivers very good quality healthcare, even when compared to the rest of the world. We look at um, the US or even the UK, it is hugely expensive to access health there if you're paying out of your pocket. NHS, in, in the reverse, in the UK, um, is starting to pick up long waiting lists. Um, they're talking about having to ship in 65,000 doctors to fill vacancies that they have. Wow. And they'll come to us to grab our very good, 
well-trained and specialized doctors to actually get that right. And the same if you look at Canada, it all runs in the same basis. But what they don't do is say that you cannot have private health care insurance. Our NHI bill, as it currently stands, relegates private health care insurance to a very small space where maybe you can cover some optical, dental and other benefits, but not a core group of benefits. The real problem with the bill at the moment, in fact, is that they haven't described two major things. So it's almost like running a medical scheme. They haven't described, um, firstly, the benefits that will be covered. So outside the promises that you won't have to pay anything, they haven't told you what benefits will be covered in the national health system. And they haven't told you what the, what it would budget at. The rest of the industry and the private guys are, are estimating what the budget looks like. But the bill is ready to be signed in, and uh, and that's where we have problems. Craig, you yourself said we do need to transform the healthcare system, and I think we all want to see it. We don't want to read stories about patients lying on floors, patients waiting days to get operations, being locked out because hospitals aren't as safe. None of us want to see it. Um, we often mention that maybe perhaps our politicians need to start going to our public health care systems in order to realise what is really happening there. And perhaps they will look at then how do we transform a system that's not working because it is a fundamental right of every South African. If we need to transform it, but yet we still need the private sector to be part of it, how do you as the private sector fill those gaps then and help that we get better health service for the whole of South Africa? Well, luckily, it's not, it's not a new, new debate. This debate has been happening for the last 10 years. In fact, uh, when national health insurance was first raised, the whole medical scheme and private health care sector provided um, a whole decade of, of information on suggestions and recommendations. In fact, the final bill has none of them included in terms of, of how it's finally been written. So it's evident that uh, you have to be able to be in a co proper consultative space to work together and collaborate, but that hasn't been the response from those in charge of the policy making. Now, I do want to just say what we mustn't do is get stuck only in the policy debate because national health uh, insurance won't practically be implemented for probably decades and certainly your and my lifetime. So what we have to do is still look at the reforms that will work. Now, one of the key reforms that we are always suggesting is that we need a better value proposition in terms of the number of doctors and specialists that we produce in the country. If we run out of those, it doesn't matter what system you have, you cannot provide better access and quality health care. So when we think of the young doctors who aren't getting placed into their national health service spaces um, or aren't being funded in those spaces, or the young doctors who are leaving the national health uh, or their, their national service um, and they don't get the posts which aren't funded in the public sector, that always worries us because it means that those doctors are the first to leave in the long run to the other territories, the other countries that are so eagerly looking to poach our doctors. So that would be the first thing that, that I'd focus on is, is just get our doctors um, retained, get them trained, get more trained yeah. um, so that we can then have a basis to, to provide better health care. Wow. Craig, thank you so much for your time this morning just to kind of explain to us where you guys are at with regards to the NHI and obviously some of the challenges that are being faced by uh, obviously ProfMed and many other medical schemes. So thank you very much for your time this morning. Good to be with you and thank you. Dit is natuurlijk Craig Comrie. Nou, hij is die wifuitvoerende beamte van die medische fond ProfMed.